I actually do understand what you're going through, what it's like to grow up with Sonny as your father. Like I've told you a hundred thousand times, I grew up with a monster for a father as well. It's amazing you turned out so grounded. Hmm. I think you're about the only person I know who'd call me grounded. <laughs> well, don't get hasty now. You still got your fair share of issues to work out. But you're a sweet girl, Christina, who's just trying to figure out what it's like to be your father's daughter. Well, not getting swallowed up by all things sunny, of course. See how you get me? That's it, exactly. Hey, but see, you've got to have a really good handle on who you are. And it's not going to help you if you keep focusing on getting Sonny's attention. It just keeps you locked in place. I don't care about Dad's attention. I want to make him suffer. Yes, and in order to make him suffer, you have to get his attention. Okay, look. I'm not really good at this stuff, figuring out why people do the things they do, but, but I just know my own limits. And if I want to make Sonny believe that I'm dating his daughter because I hate him and I want to make him miserable, then that means I'm using you. And that makes me no better than he is. And honestly, I would like to believe that I am. So this fantasy that you want to keep living out with me, it, it's got to end here, okay? I need you guys. Not using me. Well, okay, maybe a little, but it's okay because I'm using you too. It doesn't make it right. How can you not see how great this is? We both hate my father. We both want him to hurt, and nothing does that better than making him believe his worst enemy is nailing his daughter. When you think about it, you should actually be even more all over this than I am. Okay, Christina, we don't live in a magic snow globe with Sonny isolated from the rest of the world. Other people who are very, very close to you have thrown around some pretty strong opinions about this so-called relationship. And I, I, I can't come in between you and your family. You need them. Don't even worry about my family. They'll be fine. Have you seen your mother and your sister lately? Mom and Sam are upset, but they'll come around. <laughs> Where? On Planet Crazy? Once they see that this was a positive experience for me, they'll realize the end really did justify the means. Okay, see, now you're starting to scare me because you sound like Claudia. How? Claudia had a million and one different reasons to stay with Sonny, and they would change whichever way the wind was blowing. And at the drop of a hat, she could rattle off any one of them and, and honestly, sincerely believe that, that they were valid. Claudia stayed with Sonny because she finally commanded that respect. She finally had that power that she did not want to relinquish. I can relate to that. Yeah, and eventually she convinced herself that she had a secure future with Sonny, with kids and all, and that she actually loved Sonny, and that maybe with a few tweaks here and there, Sonny would love her too, as if that would ever happen. Uh, Christina, the, the point is, Claudia had to convince herself that she was getting something out of the situation in order to justify staying in that abusive relationship. That's a terrible analogy. The situations are completely different. You're not abusive, you're nice to me. You don't shove me around or yell at me or call me a whore. And besides, this is just an act. <laughs> Ah. Oh, company. Not anymore. Listen, take this girl somewhere other than here, sit her down, and tell her again why I'm a bad idea. Although this time, make it convincing, huh? Look, there's a reason my previous attempts at offering advice have failed. Okay, I'm probably the least qualified person to warn Christina away from an unsuitable companion. Even Ethan doesn't think there's anything wrong with us pretending to be together. No, 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 I didn't say that, okay? I mean, if you want to end this pseudo-dating game, then just say no. I did say no many times. But I won't listen. So please tell Johnny to stop being such a downer. Why do I have to keep reminding everyone we're not having sex? We're just pretending to get a reaction on my dad. Look, okay. We're not talking about an ordinary daddy here who plays golf on the weekends. We're talking about Sonny Corinthos, scary crime boss. Okay, I mean, you remember what he wanted to do to me when he thought I hurt you. Look, on second thought, you and I do need to have a serious conversation about this. Come on. Thank you.
I really like you, Ethan. And I owe you big time after all the lies I told about you hitting me. But please don't try to talk me out of my plan with Johnny. I'd have to turn you down. <laughs> okay, then maybe, uh, maybe you can make me understand why this ridiculous relationship that you've manufactured is so important to you. This might sound weird to you, but I haven't felt this good about anything since before the first time Kiefer put me in the hospital. It's like Johnny's part of my therapy. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It does, if you're me. Three times a week, I have an hour session with my therapist. I sit there and we drudge up all the things that make me screwed up. My type A mother, my mobster father, my abusive boyfriend. I walk out of there and I feel hopeless. Like I'm so broken, I'll never be fixed. But when I'm with Johnny and the plan is working, my dad is standing there with his head about to blow off. I feel my own power over my dad and my body and my choices. Well, look, that's definitely something to be desired, okay? But this is about more than just your need to feel empowered. You know, there are real lives at stake here. I mean, your father is a dangerous, psychotic man with a hair trigger on the very best of days. And you're aiming him at Johnny like a loaded weapon. And that gun will go off and someone will end up dead. Okay, then how is your power gonna sit with you then?